Well, it's a nice sunny day here in Ontario, but it's a chilly one. I uh, woke up to plus one, plus one today. But uh, you know what? It's a nice day. It's fall. Uh, I talked to a number of our clients this week, and, and it always comes up because I had mentioned over the last month how much I like fall. And one in particular was adamant. It is the worst season on planet Earth. The worst. In fact, they were a spring person. I hate spring. In fact, spring is the worst, the worst season on planet Earth in my mind. So quite a difference of opinion for two people that are usually like-minded. So uh, heading to the barn. Um, well, that's good too. Oh, it's a good day. It's a good day. We went with the London Fog today. Top choice. Oh, yeah. Um, heading to the barn, I'm getting closer to finishing my blog. Now I'm going to reach out to Standard Bird Canada, the USDA, and Harness Racing Update, and I suppose Harness Link to see if they want it. I kind of cut it close. Harness Racing Update has a Sunday publication, online publication, and um, although next Sunday would be fine, also I I would like to get it uh, get it out there. I'm just trying to. What happens usually when I write, much like when I talk to you, I'll be talking about one thing. Now I look down and I have 14 paragraphs of five different story titles. So um, what I want to talk about is um, personally what we did with uh, and for Gerard de Mercy. Thank you, by the way. If any of you reached out, I know that he said he had quite a few emails. Now I had posted it on Facebook, Twitter, and our site. It was the only thing I could do right now. Um, and Gerard said he'd been reached out to by a number of people. He's in the midst of trying to build a site, so good for him. Maybe we can get the ball rolling with fractional ownership in uh, in our industry because it's it's pretty clear that what that we what we have achieved what we have achieved uh, not just this year but culminating in this year. Um, people are starting to take notice. They should have long before this, but you know that what's taking place right now is is a wonderful metaphor for the industry. We're far too reactionary and not very good at it, to be honest. When something happens, it seems like we have to ponder the results of what happened for an indeterminate amount of time. <laughs> could be could be months, could be years in this case, and then decide if we're going to do something about it or with it. And it's it's. It's the reflexes of this industry are far too slow, far too slow. And, um, you know, the good news is I, I think there's always time when it comes to uh, an industry like this. So hopefully we can move forward and, and there can be more trainers that start building fractional ownership websites. Um, I would like to see the stakeholders and the jurisdictions, the horsemen's associations um, take a lead on this because it's an important uh, well, as, as I would say in politics it's an important file so I'm on my way right now to the barn um, we have babies at both barns right now we still have some I thought breaking these two at Tamika would be easier than trying to break them on a track full of people um, and uh, amongst a jam full barn um, because we're as full as you can get we're as full, our, our belt's at the last hole, so to speak, when it comes to uh, first line right now. There are trainers now getting ready to pull out. What a lot of trainers will do that race in, or that uh, train in Florida or down south in the winter will start moving there just as Harrisburg gets there. They'll send the horses down with whoever's going with them, stop in Harrisburg for the Harrisburg sale. That's generally the, the marching plan of, uh, of the industry, so to speak. So this week we will have, uh, that barn should be cleaned out to ourselves. And as we get that, we'll start bringing Harry and the rest of the horses into the fold, so to speak. I did ask uh, First Line Training Center for some additional stalls to house our babies in one place. Um, you know, James has some horses there. Um, Dominic has some horses there. And Teresa, uh, a lady that works for us, very nice lady, has her horse there also. We're going to need those stalls, so we'll probably put all the babies 
in one um, in one area, and uh, Mr. Stutzman believes there's a place that they can go. It's going to take a couple more weeks to get there. So, you know, I would say by uh, November 15th, we should have everybody in the place they need to be. Now, that creates a smaller problem, more for, for uh, our American plant, so to speak. Uh, and that problem being that three-year-old's got to come back in at some point starting end of uh, middle to end of November into December. And we're still trying to get all our stalls done in uh, Northfield Park also. This is a great, a great issue to have, a great problem to have. But, um, you know, it's still a problem. So trying to get everything situated for, for our two barns in North America, our Canadian barn here at first, which will be at first line. I'm on my way to Tomiko right now to break and jog Mick Paisley and great bet. Thank you all again for reaching out and buying those shares up. I was happily surprised to wake up the other day to have no shares of great bet available. Now Mick Paisley has some and I had the breeder come up to me last night and some of our clients come up to me last night. Our newest client come up to what, come up to me last night at the track. I gave, uh, I gave uh, Joe a little uh, tour of the paddock and, and a look at horse racing. It's always so great to have somebody involved that knows nothing, knows nothing about horse racing. Uh, very nice man, come out to Mohawk last night and uh, took him around the track and showed him the showed him the horses, showed him the paddock, and um, talked about who he had got involved in, which who, which was Mick Paisley. Um, I think he got involved with one other one too, Trotter. Yes, he did. Um, so Mick Paisley, we're going to throw the harness on her. I'm going to go out and jog her. I'm going to throw the harness on Great Bat. I'm going to go out and jog him. We got our boy, LD's Patrick, qualifying at 1030. And then tonight, the Breeders' Crown Eliminations. Now, no, we're optimistic. I know I have to be tempered too. You know, uh, Carter Michael Dio's 15 to 1 morning line coming in off five weeks. I'm not super concerned with that. If he gets a good trip and puts in a good effort, we should be fine. Crantini's coming in off a great qualifier. And Spitfire Overseas is coming in scary good. People, a little sneaky good, as my brother always says. Um, that mile last week was impressive, but also his first start on Lasix. So I don't think everybody is giving him proper do they should now I haven't looked at the cat the program catalog I haven't looked at the program so maybe it's quite a bit tougher uh, than even I it's a breeder's crown it's supposed to be tough but make no mistake Spitfire overseas is coming in razor sharp did this weather affect any of them this week uh, it did affect Carter a little bit but we were on top of it he should be fine and by all accounts everybody else is coming in as good as they can so looking for a good uh, a favorable result tonight in the Breeders' Crown Eliminations. I'd love nothing more than to see the horses come back next week. We got our boy Atlas Hanover in today at the Meadows. Now, Tim is actually going to have to race him in the John Simpson in um, Philadelphia next week. The reason being it's rules. You can't enter a horse. They draw six days out. And this is a problem in, in its own in racing is these draw dates and scratch times. They draw six days out. So they draw today for the John Simpson in six days. A little silly. So we can't list another trainer on uh, Atlas Hanover and race him today under a different trainer. It's just, it just the rules. It's the way it is. So Tim's going to have to take the horse to um, to Chester to race him, which is fine. Um, I've reached out, and I'll, I'll reach out to Jimmy again today, Jim King. He does a lot of our work down in Dover, um, down in the Dover area, and we have uh, the Matron and the Progress Stakes. Now, although... I was quietly maybe a little tempted to, because I dreamed to. I was a little tempted to put Atlas in the Breeders' Crown, but he's not quite there yet, right? And maybe he's not gonna be there. We didn't actually buy him to be this type of horse anyway. We just bought him to be a real good uh, three-year-old. We paid for a horse that might race in some of the races we're going to put him in, right? The Matron, the Progress, the John Simpson, but he belongs in there. The way the horse is raced, somebody said the other day, wow, he only went 52. Go watch the race. Go watch, you know, six feet apart is not a bad horse. These are decent horses that he beat the other day. But it isn't that he beat them, it's how he beat them. He's been impressive for us, this horse. So, um, excited to watch him race in the John Simpson next week. I'm not going to go. I just told Tim, just go ahead and put Mark on the horse. And then I'll have the horse shipped down to Jimmy uh, in Dover. So, it might end up working out very, very well for us. 
so that's a little bit of what's going on. We got, uh, I never even thought it crept up on me today also. Sweet on Pete and Purple Aura potentially have to go to Indiana next week. Now, we're going to have to have a very frank conversation about um, the preferred sale coming up in a week. I think we're going to enter a number of horses in the sale. Some of them will have obviously reserves on them. I think we are going to go ahead and enter Sweet on Pete. Um, maybe our Purple Aura. I, I If Ty went on had won yesterday and been and looked very good, maybe Ty went on. I have to take a stark look at what we have and decide and it's not an easy decision, but decide are these horses we're going to bring back at four. I'd already told everybody we're not breeding Sweet on Pete. That ownership model, that group of Sweet on Pete is almost split down the middle. People that might want to breed her and people that don't. And quite frankly, she's worth quite a bit of money. You know, I might be off a little bit of what she's worth on the racing side or the broodmare side, but gee, she's got to be worth sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. She has to be. Will to win Hanover, another one. Test the waters. You know, it's quite easy. What's she worth? Well, what would she be worth in full to a top sire? Subtract the stud fee, and that's the minimum she can be worth, I believe, in my mind. And I guess this is more a test than anything else to see if people are interested in picking up these types of mares. If the timing is bad, fine. We'll just retain them. If the timing is good, that's fine too. So decisions will have to be made moving forward this week. We don't have to enter them until next Wednesday. But in my mind, I believe that you will see. And I will go race Sweet on Pete in Indiana. I've already talked to Mr. Leonard, Ross Leonard, about taking the horses from Dayton. I don't know if Purple Aura is quite good enough right now, but um, we'll see. I told them that I believe Sweet on Pete for sure should go to Indiana, and Purple Aura might go to Indiana. We would still have those last two stakes for those horses also, and then if people wanted to breed one or both, then so be it. Both fillies have decent breeding, especially when it comes to the Ohio area, the Midwest. So that's where we're at right now uh, this morning. As I said, going to break the two babies. I'm excited to do that. I'm going to qualify my boy, LD's Patrick, and then um, continue on into the Breeders' Crown tonight. So it's going to be a great weekend, hopefully. Regardless, I know expectations. I'm human too, like you. I got high expectations, and I'm hoping we make it to the Breeders' Crown final, and I hope the horses do good. But you know what? They've had a good year. Spitfire, Crantini. Somebody made a reference to Alan had messaged me the other day and said, international money's been okay this year. He said, but... I, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that four of the top ten international money horses this year have come from your burn. Those were the only four international monies that we bought. Crantini is the leading international money by money, international money, uh, two-year-old by money. I think it's not just Colts. I thought it was just by overall money. Um, we have Austral Hanover in the mix. Spitfire overseas and Carter Michael Dior are there as well. So um, we've had a great year with international money, which leads us to the inevitable, which is the sale coming up at Harrisburg. I think it is time that we start talking about that. You know what? I appreciate all the feedback from our clients about the buckets, what you thought, how you thought they should look. I really appreciate that. Anytime that somebody takes the time out of their day to give their two cents on something I'm looking for answers for means a lot. It really does. So thank you all for, for messaging me and letting me know what you think. We'll likely be opening up those buckets first of next week. Um, as I said, it's very, very important. If you have interest in being involved with Harrisburg, then I'm going to need everybody to reach out and buy those buckets because I cannot get to Harrisburg and say, ah, I'm sure everybody can. That's That would be irresponsible by me. So if you have interest in, in, in uh, being a part of the Harrisburg sale, being a part of buying horses with us, then speak up, reach out, let me know, and we'll have those buckets up for you this week. I'm still sifting through some emails of people. Obviously, there's a, a, a lot of people that would like that premium horse, which is cool. I mean, it's cool. It's a little, little scary, um, but it's cool. Um, and then in regards to what the other two buckets, there's, there'll be two buckets, what they'll look like. One has to be affordable, and one has to be available for people to buy into. So with that, I'll let you guys go. Um, that's not very fair. I didn't talk about last night. I meant to talk about last night. So a uh, quick little rundown. 
game set match, you can see she's a little crazy. We're trying to get her squared away. That's not always an easy thing. Stretch me out a little bit last night, the big girl. Um, we'll see if we can get her under control a little bit more for next week. She wasn't horrible, but she wasn't good. So we'll see if we can get her better for next week. We started off the day in... Uh, yesterday, we'd will to win Hanover race. I'm missing a horse. It's like massive profit the night before. Um... Will to win Hanover, I gotta say, Pete, uh, I had, had an email exchange with one of our clients, Pete, and he said, well, can we just put Will to win Hanover on Lasex? I said, well, if she's not showing any blood, we've schooled her on Lasex. If she's not showing any blood under her scopes, I, I think you have the potential to be doing more harm than good putting her on Lasex. Well, yesterday she did show a little blood, one and a half out of five, which isn't a ton, but there's still a little bit there. So we are going to go ahead and put her on Lasex for next week. So Pete, we're going to find out together if, uh, if that helps. It didn't help earlier on in the year when we schooled her a couple of times, but a lot changes in a year. So we'll see, um, we'll see over the year, I guess. We'll see if Lasex helps Will to win Hanover next week. Hopefully it does. Um, I think I'm missing somebody also. Will to win Hanover was third. And then uh, we had a winner. Oh, Adrenaline Rush was a winner last night also. Damn it, I can't think of that other horse. Adrenaline Rush was a winner uh, last night. Oh, of course it was. It was the horse in uh, Ontario. It was how the hell. He raced great. I think that horse is going to be a nice four-year-old for us. He wants to be a good horse, and quite frankly, he has his aches and pains. So um, excited to see what he's going to come out like this year. And then Matt's MVP raced good. But as I said to Dominic and James last night, that's five weeks in a row this horse has gone. Maybe six, counting a schooler. Why don't we give him a week off? Wouldn't that be crazy? So I think maybe that's what we'll do with um, that's what we'll do with uh, Matt's MVP is give him a week off. No game set match, uh, Matt's MVP, and how the hell? I think that was it, right? Yes. So um, they didn't want a drill and rush. He won. They still didn't claim him. He's a perfect turning into the perfect type of horse. No one wants him, and he wins every week almost, or at least a few, couple two two three times a month. So leave him. Fine with me. Um, we'll put him right back in there again next week. Um, very happy with him and happy with the way the horses raced last night for the most part. Matt's MVP, as I said, was good. How the hell was great in a victory. Good for him. Good job by James and Harry and Nellie and everybody. And uh, game, set, match. We'll go back at them again next week. See if we can get her a little more under control. So, I'm here now. I'm going to break these babies. I'll let you know maybe on later on today how they broke, how the ones in Ontario are, are in Ontario, how the ones in first line are coming. I'll be up to see them later also. But first, I have to stop and qualify our boy, LD's Patrick, uh, today. So with that, I'll let you go. Hope you guys have a great day. It is a beautiful day here. Cold, a little chilly, but still a great day. Take care.